So I'm just going to speed through all of this that I did since we've seen it before. And if you haven't seen this process before, check out some of the earlier videos. So what I'm doing here is I've tweaked the animation on the Unity timeline and re-exported it. So I put a scene tracker on her and re-exported the animation and brought it into Maya. So you can see that I've got the skeleton here. I'm redefining the skeleton, fixing some of the missing definitions that seem to come in and readjusting the way that the HIK is solving for the character. So nothing major there. And just getting rid of some of those rule joint problems that we had before. Again, if you haven't seen that, check out some of the earlier videos. And then here, what I've done is I fixed the look at controller because I didn't really like it. So I didn't like the results. So I went back in and re-recorded and then exported the animation, imported it again, and deleted the mesh, and it automatically updated the rigs animation. I didn't have to do any new binding or anything. The animation came right in on top of the previous animation and just replaced it. So I guess in some ways that could be good, in other ways that could be bad, but it's a really nice way to work if you wanna update a scene. You don't really have to go through the whole process again. You just record it and re-import your FBX and it will replace everything. So ultimately, I think I got a pretty decent looking scene and it's something I can start tweaking and playing with for the actual film. Okay, before we move on, I want to show you one other approach that you can have to this technique. And this is a little bit more like puppeteering. This is something I'm still working on, but I find it really interesting and it's quite promising. And I want to figure out a better way to do this. But it is one thing you can do. It's a bit manual and it's a bit tedious, but I know that we'll find better ways to do it. But the idea is pretty interesting to me. This object is being tracked by the character's eyes. So if we go in here pull this object around the character follows the object around which is really interesting there's a lot of potential here especially if you're working in vr it's a lot harder with a mouse because you're limited to a two-dimensional plane of movement but if you're in vr you can do a lot more with this so i've adjusted the values a little bit on the look at controller so i'm a lot happier with how she looks around but what's cool about this is i could technically record the animation on this and put it back on to an object so let's put a scene tracker on this guy okay, scene track uh object okay and should be ready to go no problem there refresh refresh okay so let's just record this and i'm going to you don't have to record in game mode you can record in scene mode so i'm just going to grab this object and move it around a little bit i don't know where it went there i was going way into space it's the problem with um not working in VR is it's really hard to tell where this object is. So I've moved it around a whole bunch and so, and I've recorded it. So you can see we have a take here. So I'll go export animation. Okay. Look at ball, take one, save. Should show up right in here. And now what I'm going to do is let's pull in our look at ball, take one, and let's put it, let's take this guy out. Let's put it on the, in roughly the same spot. So we have 2.425, 2.425. That's where we'll start at zero, zero. And I think we have, it should have a Y value of 0.5. Okay, great, 0.5, there we go. Now I didn't record a scene object. I recorded it all by itself. Usually if I'm gonna record something that's floating in space. I might record a root object that at least creates it centered. So it's parented in an, a root object. That's sometimes an easier way to go, but this should still achieve the same ends. So now we have this look at ball take one. I'm going to go into the actual game scene here and I will drop this look at target here. We go and we'll just delete this one here and i'm going to take its animation and stick it right here so now this ball will move so now what we can also do is we can go at this um, put this in the game scene this one will keep on the camera rig for now now what i can do is go into the main girl character here and just change what her look at target is so i want to change it to let's just lock this i want to change it to this new ball that i've made the look at ball, and we'll bring that in here instead. So now when I play the scene, and we'll pop out of the game, now her view will follow that animated ball. What's really cool about this is it means I can start stacking and tweaking this animation and doing other things with it. So you can see she's it's way in the wrong place, but it doesn't matter. I can also have multiple objects that she could be following and I could blend between them. So we've animated that ball. So let's do another thing. And this is, this will be another, this is another approach that we could take. So let's create a, 
let's create a little uh, controller that we can use to, let's say, maybe puppeteer her hips or something. For this next section, I'm going to just speed it up because I kind of want to talk over the idea here. What's really exciting to me is that we could very easily create a series of controllers that can be independently recorded to drive the performance of a single character using VR and other interactive devices layered with stackable recordable properties that we can bind to different parts of a puppet. We can actually start performing a character in real time and also with various takes, which we can then tweak inside of the timeline. It took me a minute to realize that I needed to put the controller inside of her root parent, and this allowed me to puppeteer it in real time without having any conflicts of how her body moved. So what's cool about this is I have her head being recorded looking around. I then record her body moving around. And then what I can do with that is I can export the animation on the body controller, duplicate it, bring it back in the scene, and create other places where that animation can be applied. And that means I can tweak it and modify it and offset it so that I can actually get the character to dance around with a single pass of animation. This may seem a little bit crude and rough, but what's exciting to me is that this is just the beginning of creating a puppeteering system for characters inside of Unity. So imagine this potential with VR where you can take control of various parts of the character's bodies and time those performances up so that you can do a whole lot more with it. It's far more intuitive when you're playing with a character in a three-dimensional space versus trying to use a mouse to make this stuff happen. So I hope that this has been useful for you and kind of inspired you in how you can possibly use the scene tracker in your own projects to take them to the next level. I will certainly be using it in my own film and I really can't wait to see what you guys do with it. So feel free to download it, play with it, write new code for it as it is open source and see what you can do.